Now, here's a tough question uh, for, you know, from the computer science perspective, we often over-optimize. So you create processes uh, and you, okay, just like you're saying, it's so pleasurable to increase uh, in the long-term productivity that sometimes you just enjoy that process in itself yeah. by just creating processes and uh, you actually never, uh, like it has a negative effect on productivity long-term because you're too obsessed with the processes. Is, is that, is that uh, a nice problem to have essentially? I mean, it's a problem. I mean, because there, let's look at the one sector that does do this, which yeah. is uh, developers. Yeah. Right. So agile methodologies like Scrum or Kanban are basically workflow methodologies that are much better than the hyperactive hive mind. But man, some of those programmers get pretty obsessive. I don't know if you've ever talked to a whatever level three Scrum master. They get really obsessive about like it has to happen exactly this way. And it's probably seven times more complex than it needs to be. I'm hoping that's just because nerds like me, you know, like to do that. But it's it's a a broadly probably an issue, right? We have to be careful because you can just go down that that fiddling path. Like, so it, it needs to be, here's how we do it. Let's reduce the messages and let's roll, you mm -hmm. know? Um, you can't save yourself through, if you can get the process just right, right? Th so th I wrote this article kind of recently called The Rise and Fall of Getting Things Done. And I profiled this productivity guru named Merlin Mann. And I talked about this movement called productivity prawn as like elite speak term in the early 2000s where people just became convinced that if they could combine their productivity systems with software and they could find just the right software, just the right configuration where they could offload most of the difficulty of work what happened with the machines. would kind of figure it out for them, and then they could just sort of crank widgets and it'd be, and the whole thing fell apart because it, work is hard and it's hard to do and making decisions about what to work on is hard and no system can really do that for you. So you have to have this, this sort of balance between I uh, context switches are poison. So we got to get rid of the context switches. Mm -hmm. Once like something's working good enough to get rid of the context switches, then get after it. Yeah, there's a psychological process there for me, um, the OCD nature. Like I've literally, embarrassingly enough, have lost my shit before when, uh, so in, in many of the processes that involve Python scripts, the rule is to not use spaces. Underscores only, there's like rules for like how you format stuff, okay? And like, I should not lose my shit when somebody had a space and maybe capital letters. Like, it's okay to have a space. <laughs> I think because because there's this, this feeling like something is not perfect. Yeah. And uh, as opposed to in the Python script allowing some flexibility around that, you create this programmatic way that's flawless. And when everything's working perfectly, it's yeah. perfect. But actually, if you strive for perfection, it has the same stress, like has a lot of the stress that you were seeking to escape with the context switching. Yeah. Because you're almost stressing about errors. Yeah. Like when the process is functioning, you're there's always this anxiety of like, I wonder if it's gonna succeed. Yeah. I, I wonder if it's gonna succeed. Yeah. No, no, I think some of that's just you and I probably. I mean it's just our mindset, right? We're in we do computer science, right? So chicken and egg. Yeah. I guess. And a lot of the processes end up working here are much rougher. It's like, okay, instead of letting clients just email me all the time, we have a weekly call and then we send them a breakdown of everything we committed to, right? That's a process that works. Okay, I get asked a lot of questions because I'm the JavaScript guy in the company. Instead of doing it by email, I have office hours. Yeah. This is what Basecamp does. All right, so you come to my office hours, that cuts down a lot of back and forth. All right, we're gonna, instead of emailing about this project, we'll have a, a Trello board and we'll do a weekly really structured status meeting real quick. What's going on? Who needs what? Let's go. And now everything's on there and on our inboxes. We don't have to send as many messages. So like that rough level of granularity, that gets you most of the way there.